On the intermittent power outages witnessed in recent days dominated the first day of debate of the 2024 State of the Nation Address. On a day the Chamber of Parliament and the entire House was plunged into total darkness first day, or first by Dumso and later by an ECG disconnection exercise. More on that shortly. First, the debate started on family affairs note as John Jinapo and his brother Samuel Jinapo had uh, to go at each other over their respective parties' record in the energy sector. Parliamentary Affairs a correspondent Kweko Sante has the rest of the story. The debate on the 2024 State of the Nation Address presented by President Ekufuado to Parliament has begun in earnest and the recent power outages has taken centre stage. Of course, not without controversy. In fact, Parliament itself got rocked by what has now been popularly known as doom so. So let's start from the top. Abno Seasari, the Deputy Finance Minister, was arguing on the economy and what she believed the government has really done in terms of changing the fortunes of the country. She again insists that if you look at the way things are going, she believes the president has offered hope to Ghanaians. Speaker, as I listen to the president, I felt a great sense of pride. Mr. Speaker, his address showed that in a world fraught with challenges, Ghana continues to show resilience and advance in hope. Abino Siasari ended on the notes of power, and this is where the lights went off in the house. Government had to make a huge commitment to address the IPPs uh, and to make sure that we sustain the lights and not go back to the doomsday days that we were saddled with right before 2017. Well, the conversation on the power outages became a family affair on the floor. The two brothers on the different sides of the aisle, Samuel Abu Jinapo and John Jinapo, went at each other, criticizing the respective parties for the way they handle the power sector. Samuel Abu Jinapo says, whilst the recent power outages is inconveniencing, it is way better than what was experienced under the NDC. For the past three weeks to four weeks, they've been shedding load on a daily basis. Yesterday alone, they shared 530 megawatts. Hey. This afternoon, Exactly 12 o'clock, the lights went off. That is why people are stuck in the elevator. Yes. And you still have the temerity to tell us that the lights are on. Mr. Speaker, that cannot be the case. Mr. Speaker, for four years, four years, the Honorable John Jinapo, Member of Parliament for Yapo Kosovo, talks about lights going off yesterday and talks about lights going off this afternoon. Mr. Speaker, Life went off yesterday. That is correct. Life went off this afternoon. That is correct. Ghanaians went through inconveniences yesterday. That is correct. They went through, they will go through inconveniences as a result of life of this afternoon. Mr. Speaker, that is correct. But Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Ghanaians certainly do not have a short memory. They do not have a short memory. Well, the entirety of parliament was for a large part of today disconnected from the national grid. Initially, it was the normal power outages. But at some point, Parliament had to put on its generators because the electricity company of Ghana had been on the premise of Parliament to disconnect the entire house because of the 23 million Ghana cities debt it owes the power distributor. Doom, sir. Doom, sir. The deputy minority leader, Emmanuel Amakufibua, who was in his office, then walked into the floor to complain about the unbearable heat in the job 600 and how so many people were stuck in the elevators five and six floor we have people stuck in i just got the fire service to run in there so it's important we know what is happening around us the light is off except for this chamber and i don't want that to some, 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 some people are stuck in there the on the fifth and sixth floor in fact i just came in because we just got the fire service people to try to get them open open the elevator and it's very serious and i think this house before, before we continue doing business, we must know the crisis we face. We understand Parliament is making some commitments to pay some part of the debt in OCCG, but for now it will continue to run on the generators until they are able to reach some amicable settlement. 
with the Electricity Company of Ghana. But back to the State of the Nation address, and I told you early on how Abinal Siasar, the Deputy Finance Minister, started on the note of the economy. The ranking member on Agric and Cocoa Affairs for the minority, Eric Opoku, tried to punch some holes into the arguments that were made by Abinal Siasar. Every Ghanaian is feeling the heat. Now, the President appeared before this House to present the 2024 State of the Nation address, and he now describes the head of the economic management team as Dr. Digitalization. He's no longer the brilliant economist. He's now transmogrified into another area, digitalization. Meanwhile, Dr. Baumia, throughout his life, has been trained as an economist. The State of the Nation Address debate is going to continue for the next few days in Parliament up until next week when leadership on both sides of the aisles will conclude the debate and thank the President Nanadu Dankwe Kufuado for the message he has delivered. Obviously this has turned into a political footballing game where the political parties going at each other citing their respective economic prowess. But especially with this year being an election year, both parties and the MPs on the both sides of the aisle are seizing the opportunity to make it a real campaign issue. And it's going to continue till the leaders conclude the debate next week. Reporting for Joy News, Kweku Asante, Parliament House, Accra. Still on the energy sector, as election 2024 approaches, the current energy situation put pressure, mainly on the two major political parties as they prepare their manifestos. On election brief earlier, energy expert and chairman of the NPP Manifesto Committee on Energy and Petroleum, Kojo Nsafuapoko, and former uh, power minister and MP for Pru East, Dr. Kobina Donko, outlined how their respective parties intend to address the power crisis in their 2024 manifestos. While Dr. Donko is of the view we need a reserve margin when operating power plants, Kojo Poko insists government is at the forefront of paying energy sector debt. Our committee will be looking at, first of all, uh, the power sector as a subsector of the energy. We'll also be looking at petroleum sector. We'll also be looking at the renewable sector. The renewable space provides some opportunity to ameliorate the cost of fuel. However, we also recognize that there is some amount of redundancy required. And I will not call that excess capacity. In the period where the power is available, and which serves as leverage for attracting investment, the power has to be paid for. And that is, again, where the conversation must go. How do we mainstream the reserve requirement into the national budget so that it is seen as a developmental expense rather than an expense on the uh, is on ECG and NETCO. Again, our manifesto will look at the question of efficiency. Is our energy sector efficient? I personally, and this is a personal position, that I believe a 20% efficiency in the course of operations will go a long way in making our energy sector robust. We have challenges, but our manifesto, when it comes up, will seek to address the challenges as we see them. What will be very important to us will be what we call the three Fs. Facility, fuel, and basically, um, I'll just come back to the last F in a minute. But the facility is basically the IPPs that basically make sure that we are able to now keep the growth going as he is talking about, looking ahead. Then you have the fuel, which is the gas that you need, because mostly now about 75% of our generation is from thermal then the fund so the three f is facility fall and funded so the third part is to make sure that the finances is available to make sure that all the two the facility and the four is available to the Ghanaian public so we would heavily rally around the three f's to make sure that we solve um, the lasting problem of power crisis